Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Anders Winroth, Forced Family Professor of History at Yale University. Professor Winroth, who was named a MacArthur Fellow in 2003, specializes in the history of medieval Europe, especially religious, intellectual, and legal history, as well as the Viking Age. Today we'll talk with him about his new book, The Conversion of Scandinavia, Vikings, Merchants, and Missionaries in the Remaking of Northern Europe, which recently won the Macmillan Center's Gustav Ranis International Book Prize. Welcome, Professor Winroth. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Let's begin with an overview of the book. Tell us about it. Well, it's, it's a book about conversion, about religious conversion. Scandinavia became Christian around the year 1000. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do in the book is that I'm putting that into a context, mm -hmm. looking at society at large, what else is happening at the same time. And in that way, I'm trying to, to explain what happened and why it happened. Okay. Um, and what led you to write the book? Well, this is an issue that I have been curious about for a very long time. I mean, uh, ever since I was a teenager, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have always felt that uh, it was hard to come by an answer okay. of why it happened. It was a, it was a fundamental and very important uh, shift in uh, Northern European history. Mm -hmm. if one From paganism to Christianity. Yes, okay. and there were, there were many other shifts that went along with that. This is when... Uh, the, the kingdoms were created, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, mm -hmm. and so forth in Scandinavia at the same time. And I, I always wondered, why did it happen? Okay. And if one goes to the medieval sources, there are medieval, were medieval historians who wrote a thousand years ago about, about exactly this problem, trying to explain it. But to them, it, it wasn't really much of a problem because they were all uh, devoted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. So it was easy. It happened because God wanted it. Mm -hmm. And it was God's plan for humanity. If one goes, of course, today, historians generally do not accept that as, a, as, an, as an explanation. Right. So most historians uh, use the stories that, that the writer, medieval writers uh, created, uh, but they subtract the Christianity from it. And then you are sort of just left with a skeleton and something that doesn't really work. Okay. And this is what I felt needed to, to I see. be. Okay, and what do you think are some of the things that contributed to the conversion? Well, what I did was that, that uh, conversion is, a, is a, something that happens in society. Mm -hmm. So I tried to look at society at large and try to understand how Viking Age Scandinavian society worked. And again, let's talk about the time period. What does it span? Well, it's it, the conversion itself is sort of the decades around the, the year 1000. Okay. But the book starts in the 8th century and mm -hmm. goes, goes into the 11th, even the 12th century. Okay. I mean, one has to take a broad perspective. Sure. It takes a, it takes a while, I would imagine, to yes. convert. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many parallel processes okay. that don't... So what are some of the specific things you think contributed to the conversion? Well, the, the, what, as I said, I looked at society. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, is, what is exciting about Northern European Viking Age society, before there were kings, there were a lot of chieftains or petty kings. Some of them thought they were kings and called themselves kings. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, they were, they were uh, competing with each other about power, about resources, about, about money, simply. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they competed was to try to, to get as large armies as possible. Okay. And since they were not kings, since they were, they were not rulers of a state, they could not just issue a law and say, you have to come to fight in my army. They had to persuade people to come. Okay. And they did that by uh, making people friends, by, by uh, inviting them to great parties in, mm -hmm. their, in their large halls. There were many large halls, each owned by a, by a separate chieftain in Scandinavia at this time. And then they, at the parties, they gave them, you know, feast. Uh, they gave them, they gave them gifts. What kind of gifts? Well, all kinds of things. I mean, it, it's valuable things in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave them gold and silver, uh, gold and silver rings to wear around their their arms, uh, but also like swords with the, with the gold on the handles and so forth. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is this is very well known that that this was happening. I argue that that they also used religion 
as one of these gifts. Uh, they could give them a sword and then the, the person who got the warrior who got the sword was very happy about it and was likely to join the chieftain when he went out in war the mm -hmm. next year. Uh, he could also give him religion. He could give him Christianity, which was very prestigious, just like gold. Why was it prestigious, though? Because the, the great rulers of Europe were Christian okay. and people knew that. People the great that. monasteries and churches of Europe were very, very rich. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why the Vikings went out to take those riches from, from those churches. Mm -hmm. So they, they associated Christianity with power, with wealth, uh, with all kinds of things that were positive, and thus it got, got a positive loading itself. Right, okay. Now let's talk about how you did your research. Um, and is it different perhaps than, um, what's unique about the way you did your research? I'll put it that way. Well, usually I, I work a lot with actually medieval sources in, in the original, in, in when I teach legal history as I do this semester mm -hmm. and do research in it. I actually have the students work in the Beinecke directly with the medieval documents, mm -hmm. handwritten on parchment. And what is the language? Uh, those, those will be in Latin. Okay. Um, but the, for the conversion project, uh, the, the, there are very few written sources. And they have all been very well researched mm -hmm. uh, and edited, and so I did not need to work very much with the original medieval uh, documents. I okay. looked at the modern editions of it. Right. So what I did was that I, I worked with with the, the texts that exist, but they're very few and they're very very difficult to interpret. And the, but also with the reports of archaeological digs, of which there are very very many. So I spent a lot of time in uh, the Yale Library and in libraries in Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. okay. Yale Library is really a wonderful place to do humanistic research, and we need to keep it that way, mm -hmm. of course. Mm. Okay. Um, what I'm curious about is during, you know, those those years where the conversion <coughs> was taking place, were there churches building being built in in those three countries? Well, that ended up being those three countries. Yes, yes. Okay. The, the the first churches we know were built. We know there was built a church in the 830s in central Sweden. Mm -hmm. That might be one of the first Scandinavian churches, but. I bet there was one in Denmark in the 820s, but nobody says. We, there's no evidence for that. Mm -hmm, okay. And what about, um, you know, there weren't, you said there were no real leaders, um, that there were more chieftains and, and tribes. Were they warring constantly or was there peace? Did they fight over their religious values, for instance? You know, they, they fought over a lot of things, but they did not always fight. I mean, there were they, there were uh, alliances. Uh, there were there were constant network of alliances that was constantly shifting, mm -hmm. uh, and in, in, interpunctuated all the time by by uh, uh, open warfare instead. Uh, but always new alliances, uh, a very fluid situation. Where, where everybody tried to get the upper hand, mm -hmm. both by fighting, but also by persuading and by talking and by making people your friends. Uh -huh. It seems almost like it would be ex it's exhausting to have to continue to give people gifts in order for them to stay on your side. I mean, yes. is that the case th that it was like that? Yes, yes, and that's, that's, that explains the Viking raids. Okay. That's why the Scandinavians figured out that, that okay, I need more capital to use a, a modern term mm -hmm. and I can get that if I go to Europe and attack a, a monastery. Right, right, wow, okay. Mm. So what do you conclude in your book? Well, uh, I, I, my book is a synthesis so it's trying to, to paint a broad picture in which the conversion is fitted mm -hmm. and uh, so my, my conclusion is, is that uh, uh, you have this society, this very fluid society, and you have these chieftains that are using, uh, they have a lot of tools in the toolbox for accomplishing their political goals. And what I'm arguing is that, that Christianity is one of the tools, just like pagan religion was, is another of the tools. Many of them tried to, to use pagan religion. Christianity was a better tool because of the prestige associated with it, thanks to the, the emperor and, and uh, the kings of in, in England and so mm -hmm. forth being Christian. So they were used as models, yes. basically. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here with us today and sharing some of your work. The book is fascinating. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Okay.
For more information about Professor Winroth and his research, please visit our website at yale.edu slash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.